Renault Arcana strays into a market segment for mid-sized coupe SUVs, previously only occupied by the premium brands. To compensate for the lack of a posh badge on the bonnet, you get plenty of pavement presence and a dose of Renault's latest hybrid technology, with both mild hybrid and full hybrid petrol power plants on offer. As for the inside, well, here's where the efforts made to imbue recent smaller models with extra cabin quality have paid off, enabling Renault to push up market using the same interior technology. The result is a surprisingly polished proposition. While it's built on the same platform as a Clio, Renault says that the Arcana offers a different kind of driving experience. It is different, but you'll have to accept some compromises. Uh, the crossover vibe, that means a slightly higher ride height and also a little more cornering body movement than a regular hatch would have. And at least on the 18-inch wheels of our test car here, the ride is firm. The Arcana certainly can't smooth out the bumps like a softer riding SUV or a more typical Renault model could. Uh, combined with steering, which is precise but a bit detached, this uh, isn't a car to hustle along. It's at its best being driven smoothly when it uh, becomes a comfortable cruiser. There's a choice of full hybrid E-Tech or mild hybrid TCE 140 petrol engines, both delivering around 140 horsepower. The E-Tech unit is more complex and very efficient. The TCE is simpler but a little quicker. Our test car has the E-Tech hybrid powertrain, which delivers 148 newton meters of torque from the petrol engine and 250 newton meters from the electric motors. But performance is unremarkable, uh, with 62 miles an hour coming up in just under 11 seconds. However, up to 58.9 miles per gallon on the WLTP combined cycle is theoretically possible, and the CO2 is a clean 108 grams per kilometer. Both powertrains come with mandatory but very different automatic gearboxes uh, which don't respond very quickly to your right foot but do suit this Renault uh, to cruise and that's where you'll notice some really impressive refinement. In town you might uh, find the ride a little on the firm side but it does iron out speed humps and potholes reasonably well and the E-Tech hybrid can default to full electric progress for short periods. The Arcana may be a clean sheet design, but there's something very familiar about it when you're viewing it front on. Uh, the days when Renault was famed for unpredictable styling have, it seems, long gone. And so the Arcana features a bluff and wide version of the familiar Renault family face. There's certainly an awful lot going on here. There are strakes across the roof. There are twin contours on both sides of the bonnet. And further down, there's a trim-specific lower skid plate, which is finished in gunmetal on this top RS line model in grey on the S edition version and in dark grey on the base iconic variants. From the side things are less fussy and here's where the Arcana can't be confused with any other Renault model and that's thanks to what the brand calls sleek coupe inspired styling with an athletic stance and sloping profile. At the rear there are family cues which work very well, wide tail lights narrowing into a shallow red lighting strip with the Renault badge at its centre and the model name below. Okay now, so let's uh, step through that long front door to see if the Akana's interior is as distinctive as the outside. Get yourself comfortable and it's all very new era Renault with a dash of extra sporting embellishment if you've uh, stretched up to this top RS line variant. Uh, it's certainly enough to make uh, some rivals really seem a little dull, or at least it is, uh, provided you've avoided base trim and you've therefore got your cabin all specked out with these ambient lighting strips here. Uh, there's a larger center portrait style screen and this plush faux leather and fabric or suede style upholstery. Overall, this car feels like it's from a slightly larger segment than uh, most of the compact SUVs you'll find, at least in terms of leg space, if not in terms of shoulder room. Uh, visibility is very good all round, and that's thanks to a reasonably deep window line and a slightly higher than expected driving position. Plus, there's also plenty of cabin stowage space. As for the MediaTek, uh, well, we like this uh, portrait easy link central infotainment screen, which is uh, seven inches with base iconic spec, but as here, uh, 9.3 inches in size further up the range. What you view through the uh, grippy 
three spoke steering wheel here. Uh, that depends on the powertrain that you've chosen. Uh, TCE mild hybrid variants get a 4.2 inch screen, which is flanked by physical gauges. But e tech hybrid models, like the one we're driving here, get this uh, 7 inch customizable display that stretches across the entire binnacle with virtual dials and more engaging graphics. Let's head to the back of the cabin now where the Arcana's length should deliver some extra comfort for rear seat passengers. And that is pretty much what you get. Uh, there isn't a great deal of room to stretch out, but it is better than the rather cramped conditions which are served up by obvious rivals. In terms of legroom, it's more Ford Cougar or Peugeot 3008 than Ford Puma or Toyota CHR, and all the better for it. Let's finish with a look out back. Uh, the conventionally opening tailgate does without any standard or optional electrical embellishment and it opens to reveal a lengthy load space which you have to access over quite a high lip. There's 480 litres of capacity on offer in this full hybrid model. You would have 513 litres if you went for the mild hybrid version. Uh, that doesn't have to package in, of course, such a large battery. Obviously, the lower roof line of the Arcana restricts capacity compared with a boxier SUV in this class, but what's available here should be more than sufficient for most owners who will be pleasantly surprised by the practicality on offer from this sporty-looking car. How you view the Renault Arcana will depend largely on your priorities. If performance and driving involvement are at or near the top of your list, you might find yourself a bit underwhelmed by its limited dynamic abilities, especially in light of the sporty styling. If though you're merely looking for a distinctive and reasonably practical compact SUV, which is a bit larger than the class norm and provides plenty of equipment for the money, then there's plenty to like. Now, yes, to some extent, this Renault falls between two segments, those of compact and mid-sized coupe SUVs, but it's more distinctive than the closest rivals you could pitch against it, models like the Toyota CHR and the Volkswagen Tiggo. Yet, it costs no more, and it easily beats both for practicality, style, and substance. Well, if you like the way the Arcana looks, you may well think that's delivered here. <laughs>